Hello. We've reached the final topic in our series on the joy of our salvation and we're going to be looking at the gospel of truth. You may remember that Pilate, when Jesus was up before him just before his crucifixion, said those famous words, what is truth? This is a bit rich coming from Pilate because the truth was literally staring him in the face. More of that later. To start with, I looked at a few quotes about truth. A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. Now this is a bit ironic because it's attributed to Mark Twain but it's highly unlikely that he actually wrote it. Jonathan Swift found it, it's an old proverb, and brought it to people's attention. But the reason I included it was that C.H. Spurgeon quoted it in a sermon. So if he can use it, then it's good enough for me. But what this is really saying is that lies spread very quickly. A wildfire of lies. They can spread around the world incredibly quickly. This next quote is an interesting one. There are always four sides to a story. Your side, their side, the truth and what really happened. For your side, well, I think you're highly likely to be missing some vital information. You're not going to get the full picture. But isn't that true also of my side? There's always personal bias involved when we pick a side. We pick what we think is the truth or what we want the truth to be. And that always is biased. But the interesting bit about this quote is the truth and what really happened. What's the difference between those two? Well, if you take the last one, what really happened, we could interpret this as happening truth. These are the unarguable facts, the dates, the times, the places, things that can be corroborated. Contrast that with the truth and what I read suggested we could call this story truth. If I'm telling you a true story, I want you to feel what I felt. I want it to touch you like it touched me. I want you to see my truth, my experience truth. I think that's a better way of describing truth as experience truth. However, this is my favourite quote. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. It's certainly true that as humans, we complicate truth. You've heard about a web of lies, and that gets really complicated because you do have to remember who you said to what. In James 1, it says, one who doubts, one who doubts the truth, one who listens to lies, one who takes their eyes off the truth, is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That's what lies are like. This verse is perhaps one of the most famous in the Bible. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The simple and pure understanding of it is that God is truth. He is complete, steadfast, uncomplicated truth. It's not dependent on us or anything we think or anything we are. God is truth. John 1 is fundamental to our faith and right at the start of John 1 it says the light or the truth shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And then in verse 14 it says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son 
who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And if you hadn't already realised that he's taught that this is talking about Jesus, in verse 17 it says, grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. So, if we move on a bit and apply this a little, in 1 John 5 verse 20 it says, We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true. So basically, Jesus is truth, and um, we know that um, he gives us understanding of the truth. And that's probably because we are in him who is true by being in his son, Jesus Christ. If we believe and have accepted Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ is in us and we are in him. We are surrounded, upheld by the truth. From the Old Testament, here are some verses about truth. The first one in Proverbs, truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Truth is connected to God's changeless character. Truth, God, always was, always is. It never changes. We really can trust it. And then in Psalm 145, it says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. This is a promise about truth. If you know and acknowledge the truth, the happening truth, then it will lead you into an experience of God. Story truth. You can experience God more and more. Psalm 25 is another quite well-known passage. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour and my hope is in you all day long. The psalmist here is yearning to follow God more. He's wanting more. He wants more truth, more understanding, more hope. In Romans 10.10 10, we read, It is with your heart you believe. And here the psalmist is engaging his heart. His heart is full of God's truth. Going back to the New Testament, this is another well-known verse. And we've been looking at it in house group. And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We need to come, accept Jesus, accept the truth. But then we need to take that further step and believe. We need to engage our hearts. We need to experience truth. In Mark 4 it says, he said to them, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, you put it on its stand, for whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. The truth of Jesus is revealed, it's not hidden away. We may not fully see it or understand all that that means, but as we continue to follow Jesus, Jesus, the way, we can see more truth. As we carry along this route that Jesus has set out for us, our vision will be progressively sharpened to the truth. Another aspect of truth can be found in John 8 where Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. 
So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I think you'll probably agree, I know I certainly do, that everyone sins. I've certainly sinned. All of us, therefore, is a slave to sin. We're bound by it. I love this analogy here of the slave and being bound and the son setting you free. We are sons and daughters of God. We are brothers and sisters of Christ. So therefore we are free indeed. You remember that Jesus died and dealt with our sin. He was victorious over sin and death. He rose again. Our sin is sorted in the truth that Jesus is. This is where the truth comes from. And also don't forget, and there's a reminder in John 15, when the Advocate comes, whom I'll send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. The Holy Spirit that we've all been promised, our counsellor, our guide, is also called the Spirit of Truth and is open and available to us. There are also warnings in Scripture. Remember Judas, who was part of the disciples who surrounded Jesus. But remember it was Judas who led the soldiers to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas had been very close to the truth didn't mean that he was necessarily committed to it. We need to come and believe. We need to trust. We need to allow our hearts to be involved. In the Old Testament, Jeremiah the prophet was at a time when the children of Israel were being particularly wicked and um, God had told Jeremiah to tell the people that if they didn't change their wicked ways then they would be um, exiled to Babylon. They had completely deserted the truth but worse than that they denied what was happening. They stuck their heads in the sand and they saw peace where there was no peace. They ignored the threat and hoped that it would go away. Denying the truth doesn't change it. They didn't like what Jeremiah was saying, so they didn't accept it. However, sin is never removed by denying it exists. What God says happens, and the children of Israel were exiled to Babylon. In the New Testament, in the time of the early church, the Jewish leaders incited the people against Paul and Barnabas and they were persecuted. So as well as sticking our heads in the sand and ignoring the truth, we can turn away from it. We can push the truth so far away that it no longer affects us, no longer touches our hearts. We can turn from it. And this is what Jewish leaders had done at the time of the early church. But what we're exhorted to do then is to stand firm and hold fast. Stand firm, brother and sisters. Hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you. This is what we need to do. There's quite a lot of military language in standing firm and holding fast. So it's perhaps not a surprise that the armour of God takes this theme up again. And Ephesians 6.14 says, Therefore put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. We need to gird ourselves with God's truth. I love this analogy. This idea of God as truth is wrapped around us, supporting us, protecting us and upholding us. 
as we come to the end of this talk there might be things that you have thought about you may never have come to the truth at all or you might have come but we all need an extra touch an extra um, injection if you like of truth we need to allow our hearts to open to truth a little bit more when you come you accept when you believe you can always add to that belief until the day we are raised with Christ to live in heaven for eternity Amen